up to the stage, Daniel McCourt. I took the drive down the country road into my hometown, even though the older crowd has grown up and rolled down. But every now and then I stop and call the drink or two. Hello, Ithaca, or whatever shit town we're in tonight. Jesus Christ, you guys drunk yet? You live in Binghamton, right, isn't that? Drink up, people, black out. Drive home. It doesn't affect me. I don't care. I think drunk drivers should be the spokespeople for automobile safety. Those people risk their lives every Friday and Saturday night. Seriously, it should just be a, a car commercial with some, like, Aaron drunk guy, just like, hey, my name's Dan, and I, I, have, five, I have five DWI. And when I decide to po polish off a fifth of vodka and jump behind, behind the wheel, I trust Honda Civic. <laughs> Holy shit. Honey. We gotta get a Honda Civic, this asshole's not dead yet. This is amazing. But yeah, feel free to black out, I don't care. I'm just saying like, you gotta watch out, these cops are stepping up enforcement. If you hear the local radio, they have their advertisements, they're like, cops, we'll see you before you see us. No, you won't. No, you won't. I'm driving, I'm driving drunk right now. I'm seeing double. I am twice as likely to see both of you. <laughs> Fucking morons. I, uh, I was watching this documentary about this guy, Clive, and Clive had a necrosis in his brain and uh, he lost the part of his brain that allowed him to form new memories. So he could only retain five seconds of information and then it was gone permanently, forever. He was living in the moment all the time. And you talk to any Zen prick and they're like, oh yeah, it's spiritual, that's enlightenment. Living in the moment. Well, talk to Clive. He was like, no, it's horrific. It's like I just woke up every five seconds. You know what he followed that up with? No, it's horrific. It's like I just woke up every five seconds. You know what he followed that up with? No, it's, you get the point. I'm just glad that Clive surrounded himself with good people, kind of the way a piece of shit surrounds itself with porcelain. Because if I was, uh, if I was Clive's son, I would ruin his day every five seconds. Just every day, all day, hey, we're going to Arby's. Oh my God, I hate Arby's. Too bad, that's where we're going. We're going where? We're going to Arby's. Oh my God. I hate Arby's. Too bad, that's where we're going. We're going where? You have AIDS. Yeah, you have AIDS and we're going to Arby's. Oh my God, we're going to Arby's? What about, what about the AIDS? I'm dealing with the Arby's news now. Oh, I don't think you understand. Pops, you have full-blown terminal degenerative AIDS. So we're not going to, we're still going to Arby's. I would never get old. You could say whatever you want. He, he doesn't remember anything. Hey, you have Arby's and we're going to AIDS. Oh my God, I have Arby's? How did I get Arby's? I don't know, we went to AIDS, you went into the AIDS bathroom, you sat down, you got Arby's. That's where everybody gets Arby's. That's why it tastes like that. <laughs> Fucking bullshit. It's a weird brain abnormality. I'm into the neuroscience stuff. So I was watching another YouTube thing. Uh, there was this kid, Nicholas, who was born without a brain. And uh, he just had a brain stem, so the local news did an editorial and said, hooray, Nicholas turned two. But the editorial didn't address the question I had, which is, why is he not in a landfill? <laughs> no. Not, oh, you, 
You can't nourish everything that you create. What do you like? Fart in your minivan and put it on recirculate? Oh, we all gotta live with this. I, I made this. We all have to suffer for as long as possible because I ate Taco Bell without protection. No, fucking. No, you gave birth to a fucking zombie. It's a vacant sack looking for brains. You end it like a Chinese girl. I would fucking... <laughs> fucking sick. I would have more of a moral issue pissing out a campfire than burying a brainless baby boy in a bucket of water. They, they don't have taxidermy in North Dakota? That would be a lot less creepy. Stitch the, cut, the kid up and keep him around. That's a lot less <laughs> fucking creepy. You go over to their house now, you're like, uh, your, your corpse is breathing. <laughs> oh, no. That's Nicholas. We keep him around to make people feel uncomfortable about the, about the direction of humanity. Would you like some corn? No! <laughs> Fucking weirdo. You're wasting valuable resources on a kid with no brain. Like, oh no, I'm lactating. Get out the beer bong and the brainless kid. I'm sure there's... <laughs> I'm sure there's like a nice, cordial, and deeply perverted homeless guy who needs nourishment, you could, you know, with your breast milk, and he has a fucking brain to appreciate it, all right? <laughs> it doesn't even have to be a homeless guy. It could be a, a curly-haired comedian currently offending 65 people. <laughs> and, and yes, I would thoroughly enjoy a bowl of Honey Nut Titty Milk Cheerios. <laughs> and if for some weird reason that led to something, like we get intimate, we're not keeping the kid. <laughs> With your fucking track record, I don't want you fucking giving birth to a foot and then like, oh, we gotta pick up a four pack of tube socks and a soccer ball. <laughs> No, we can name him Beckham. <laughs> Just fucking drag around our severed foot, kid. You fucking sick freak, you end it. You fucking find a dumpster, it's not that hard. There's no, <laughs> there's no fucking dumpster attendant. Oh, can I dump my brainless baby in here? Sorry, we're at capacity since the O'Neill twins. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a bad season, end of March. It's nine months after prom. <laughs> what you have is a locomotion issue because the zombie can't run away. He's got no brain and you can't back over him in the car because, like, how'd he get there, right? <laughs> so, what do you do? You can't drown him. You can't drown him in the tub. His head is hollow. It just floats back up to the tub. <laughs> the thing is, Stephen Hawking needs to die. <laughs> The man hasn't exercised in 60 years. The man literally hasn't gotten out of a chair in 60 years. That is his biggest contribution to science. Forget all his Nobel laureate worthy work in physics and string theory and all that. He's proved you can just sit in a chair for 60 years and turn 80. He, he do, you don't have to move. You know how crippled... He's so crippled, he can't say the word crippled. Do you know how crippled you are? Stephen, how would you describe yourself? <laughs> I don't know. He's a genius crippled. I don't understand him. I'm just saying, plus he's shaped like the letter Z. It's like... <laughs> and, smartest guy on the planet. We can't prop him up. 
Plus, if he's so smart, why is he crippled? What? Well, that's a legitimate question. He has a brilliant mind to do work in stem cell research. He spends all day staring at stars. I have the right of mind to just wheel him into a stem cell research clinic until he figures out how to gimp his way back home. <laughs> Selfish stargazer. You gotta... <laughs> You, he has a brain, man. You gotta have priorities at that age, and wiping your own ass is at the top of the list. <laughs> Looking at stars is like down here, under like TV, family, friends, stars. Wiping your own ass, stars. And he's like rich. He can't even buy a steak. He can't, no salad food. What is he doing with the money? At least get some fucking rims for your chair or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, he's very crippled. He beat Rosa Parks in a game of musical chairs. He's very crippled. I don't know. It's weird. I, uh... That was a horrible time to take a sip of water. Everybody's just like, Dude, we paid 12 fucking bucks. Hydrate on your own time, asshole. <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you something. I am not coming back to this town without MapQuest directions ever again. I don't care what anybody has to say about them. They have always been accurate down to the 100th of a mile. They even anticipate everybody's complete illiteracy and inability to read a map. They say shit like, oh, if you've reached Denny's, you've gone too far. Which should be their slogan, by the way. You're at Denny's, you've gone a little too far. Because you try to get directions from people on the phone and it, it, it never works out. You're just like, yeah, yeah, I'm in Binghamton. Where are you? I'm at your one stoplight. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with that. <laughs> okay, I'm across the street at the Binghamton Historical Dive Bar Directory. <laughs> Go in? No, they're closed for some odd reason. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with that building. It, dude, it's a 400-story building plastered with neon lights on all sides, visible from Salt Lake City, Utah, destroying the circadian rhythms of avian species in the Northeast and synthetic aurora borealis in the fucking Gulf of Mexico. Time Magazine dubbed it the son of the nights. Sorry, I'm unfamiliar with that glowing iconic building that keeps me up every night. <sighs> All right, dude. Uh, I'm across the street from a bush. Oh yeah, I know where you are. Yeah, take a left at the bush and... Um, what the fuck is going on here? I still work a day job. Um, which is odd because I, I say things that should get me fired regularly, but I still have a day job. And uh, they hired this new guy at work and he's uh, mentally deficient. He's, um, I don't know, I feel like I'm being polite when I should be angry. What I'm trying to say is a retarded guy can do my job. <laughs> That's not an expression. Literally, this isn't for the sake of a joke, literally, I am being replaced by a retard. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have the courtesy to hire an Asian who's learning English or a paraplegic or an Asian who's paraplegic. No, they hired somebody crippled in their fucking brain to do my job. That's like being a food critic and getting replaced by a bulimic. It's like, what? We gotta go with the hot hand here, Dan. She tastes the food twice. <laughs> Can't compete. I had to train my retarded replacement. This is still happening. They didn't give me like a bag of M&Ms to reward him or anything. I had to <laughs> fucking train this guy. And then the worst part about it is, and I am being flat out honest, he's been there three weeks. I've been there a year and a half. He is so much better than me. <laughs> I'm not gonna call him a savant. He, we're grilling paninis. We're not like counting cards or, or toothpicks. 
Like, but he can fucking fixate on a grilled cheese, like a zen-like focus. I have an internal dialogue. Shit just goes on in my head, but he can just sit there watching water boil because if he breaks concentration, it just goes back to the white noise in his head. Just... <laughs> You know when you drive out a range of a radio station, just hey, they're saying what I'm thinking. <laughs> Isn't it kind of a fucking liability to have a retarded guy around a 400 degree panini grill? What if he just grills his hand? You can't even fucking reprimand him. What were you thinking? I was thinking. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. He fucking. People are like, oh, we're gonna get replaced by robots. I would love to get replaced by a robot. I guess they wanted something more personable. I don't know. It's fucking, I got, I'm, I'm getting replaced by that. Literally that. There's no need for gender because nobody is ever fucking that. There, <laughs> there's no need for pronouns like him or her when you could replace its genitals with a jack-in-the-box and improve its quality of life, all right? They're fucking irritating. So a retarded guy, yeah, I'm demoralized. I'm fucking, I'm pissed. Retarded guy does my job. He probably has a 401k. They do that for retarded people now. He, he has a 401k despite the fact that he can't count to 401 <laughs> or say the alphabet decay. <laughs> he's got better benefits than me. He's got, he's retarded. He has superhero benefits. He probably, have you seen their benefits? He probably doesn't even have to wait in the waiting room he doesn't have to show a fucking insurance card you just walk into the hospital with your eyes that close together they're like right this way right this way sir this is immediate i have a severed arm sorry this guy's eyes are very close i can ask so i'm changing my whole resume I'm going to change everything. It's just like, forget my commencement speaker nomination. Forget all that shit. Just not even, not even a GED. I'm just going to put some high school. No job diversity, just 18 years pumping gas. I didn't even check tire pressure or check the oil. I didn't even do diesel. Just 18 years at pump two. People give me a tip. You know, for, and I rip it in half just to hear the sound. Oh, yes, I live for the sound. Fuck it, like career objectives, simple, repetitive tasks. You know, uh, mode of transportation, my social worker's minivan. De desired salary, shiny coins. Best time to schedule the interview, anytime after the blue pill. And just for anybody who has a retarded something or other in maybe, if you're retarded and you're in here, you didn't get it anyway. But if you have, <laughs> so if you're retarded, then fuck you. I didn't offend you. You didn't get it. I didn't fucking offend you. But if, you know, you have a loved one who's retarded. It's not politically incorrect to call this guy retarded because for one, He's fucking retarded. <laughs> but more importantly, more importantly, he, uh, like, the, the, the mentally handicapped don't steal your job. When somebody steals your job, they're fucking retarded. He can defend himself. Hey, you're a fucking asshole and you're retarded. This guy have a job. Oh shit. I lost an argument to a retarded guy replacing me. A battle of wits, the retard one. I am today's not my day. I'm not getting my HIV results today. I'm gonna fucking go home, take Xanax, watch Frasier. This is fucked up. This is fucked up. 
it's horrible. But, um, you know, that, that's kind of the situation. I'm at a point in my life where my job is so far below what friends have expected of me that I've been at work in my work attire uh, and somebody comes up to the Panini station, a friend of mine, and they've said verbatim more than once, Dan, what, what do you do? <laughs> As if they didn't just see me make their fucking panini. Like, what a condescending question that is. Damn, what do you do? Oh, you got me. I'm just researching my next bestseller, Inequities in the Human Condition. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, right now, when I finish, I'll show up more time when I'm finished global banking. Right now, we're driving down share prices in mineral-rich North African countries and buying them up for pennies on the dollar. Ding, your panini's done. <laughs> Fucking asshole. What do I do? Uh, I stand under a panini sign in panini attire, whatever that is, and I make origami. Except on Wednesdays, it's pottery, you dumb fuck. I, yeah, I'm making... What did they think I was going to have, like, a moment of clarity? Like, Dan, what do you do? What do you mean I'm making your sandwich? Oh, my God, what am I doing? Holy shit, I'm making sandwiches at 30. I fucked up. This is a horrible mistake. When do night classes start? Oh, my God. Like, that was going to happen. It's bullshit. Half these people knew me in high school. I was on acid in math class. And I don't mean, like, Tuesdays in March. I mean weekdays between 97 and 2000. Like, all the time. Like, my pupils, uh, dilated is an understatement unless they were giving birth to my fucking brain. Like, I was, I'm lucky I still have my eyelids. They were getting in the way of the cigarette trails. Fucking, uh, Sobering up at fucking 16 was like a handle, of liquor, and a bunch of pot. It's kind of sobering when you're only seeing double and vomiting when you've fucking been staring at cartoon characters and trying to jerk off. It gets a little weird. <laughs> just... No, I'm just saying that that may happen. You just need it get the right concoction of drugs. Like if you're a drug abuser, if you're not a drug abuser, I definitely encourage it. Um, my dealer is a fucking asshole though. I have the worst dealer on the face of the planet. It's like the prices are going way up, the quantity is going down. When you buy pills, you know, besides from the pharmacy, when you buy pills from somebody, it's like the speed limit sign. It ends in zero or five. You get 30 pills or 55 pills or something. He's giving me shit like 62, 31. It's like, dude, what part of all of them did you not understand? This is a conversation we have once a week. It's just like, dude, I got those DVDs that you want. How many do you want? All of them. I didn't tell you how much I, I don't really care. I'll be at Wendy's in five minutes. <laughs> you know, they're not going to go stale. He could be like, dude, I got 2,000 Adderall. I'd be like, well, I guess I'll have to develop a very serious tolerance. <laughs> Something's got to happen. I'm just happy that uh, I grew up... See, that's the thing. My act starts out innocent and then turns dark. It's like the opposite of Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's, um, I'm just glad because I, uh, I grew up at the, at the very tail end of the last generation to grow up without the internet. Uh, like the last attention span out of Vietnam. We had the neighborhood, and my neighborhood was great. I had a great childhood. We had one of everything. We had like another white family. We had a bunch of black families. We had a child abuse household. We had a Jewish, like an Orthodox. They were like two yarmulkes Jewish. They were fucking super <laughs> Jewish. Like the type of Jew, the type of fucking Jew that would spin a dreidel, go to work, and come back, and it'd still be spinning. Like, how Jewish can you be? It's 
fucking they shower every day and the oil in their hair still lasts for eight days. Like it's they're fucking Jewish Jewish. I had a great childhood where when I was a little kid, I could walk across the street from my elementary school because we could still do that because people didn't care about us in the 80s. I mean, they were getting raped, just not as much as they are now. So I could... <laughs> the point is, I could... I, it was a bad neighborhood, too. I would still walk across the street to the library and look up penis in the dictionary and fucking laugh, because it said exactly what I knew it'd say. Hey, penis, it's funny. But that, you, you can't fucking do that now. I guarantee you, like, the very next kid to look up penis was, like, rerouted to a geriatric male bondage strap on leather varicose veins speedballing midget snuff porn site with like strobe lighting from the discharging of an m16 in a dimly lit room it's like the little eight-year-old brain just shuts down his phone rings seven days well, who gives a shit if he dies in seven days? He's seen everything. It's like, geez, if Anne Frank saw that shit, she would shit her last calorie of nutrition into her lederhosen and then eat it because she saw two girls, one cup, which is, which sounds a lot like a triple mastectomy video, but it's not. It's just like, yeah, that's our generation, though. We watch the most foul, snowballing, fecal matter back into the person's mouth. We not only watch this horrific clip, we watch other people watch that clip. <laughs> Fuck up is our generation. I would rather watch my grandmother watch her house burn to the ground with the cat inside. <laughs> Film her reaction, yeah. Two mortgages, one kitten. <laughs> Grandma's coming out of retirement. I think my internet watching is, is borderline. It's definitely like somebody I should talk to a therapist about because I'll just watch like an hour of UFC knockout highlights and then compound fractures in short clips and then I'll watch porn and then I'll watch <laughs> Holocaust videos and I'm like, dude, these shouldn't... You can't consume those at the same time. It's like eating... Fucking Pop Rocks and Mountain Dew. It's a volatile combination. What the hell am I doing? Oh, yeah. Here's an idea. Pick a career path where your objective is to make people react using just words. And we've built you an audience of the most overstimulated, desensitized generation in history. Like a generation of people that need the word fuck peppered into their diction. Otherwise, they fall asleep just like... The nonpartisan fucking Congressional Budget Committee debating fucking geopolitical fucking responsibility without regarding parochial fucking tax break. That was very informational. I didn't sleep once. A generation of people who find the JFK Sapruder film not only rather agreeable, but rather entertaining. Just like, hey, that's where the bullet ends hope and peace. Yeah, that's great. It's just like, my audience, it's just like the fucking fixed, flat, facial affect of a two-decade daily MDMA abuser after homemade Botox without the charm of a stapled smile. Yeah, make Frankenface laugh and make sure it's FCC fucking appropriate and don't offend your mother. Well, fuck that. It's not going to happen. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, no, people are overstimulated. Aren't you? Yeah, we are. I don't know, my, my parents came out to my act, and, uh... <laughs> That's the whole story. My parents came out to my... Oh. Yep, he summed it up. I don't need to say anything else. Dude, can you write the forward for my, like, autobiography? Just, like... Oh, shit, on my doorstep again, huh? Uh, we're desensitized. You get shows like Cops or, you know, like, 
I, I'm just saying, my audience, my audience is lucky their leg moves when the doctor taps it with a hammer. Like, they're just too, uh, they're moved, I'm fine. Where's the Pop-Tarts and the keypad? I have a date with a clip of a lady tearing up through a hole in what's left of her ripped off monkey face. I'm gonna fucking eat Pop-Tarts and not react to that shit. Yeah, hey, yeah, what happened to Charla Nash is a horrible and it shouldn't happen because she was invited to her friend's house and then the chimp you know attacked her she, it's stupid you don't invite a face to your house when you own a chimp on pharmaceuticals <laughs> plain and simple like if look it, here's a rule of thumb if michael jackson did it don't do it all right <laughs> look at the parallels though chimp check one Pharmaceuticals, check two. House guests that become liabilities, check, check three. The presence of facial dysmorphia, check four. It's like, holy shit, lady, buy a glove, touch a kid, and cut your fucking nose off. We've seen it before. Just don't do a duet with Paul McCartney. That would be awful. That was, uh, you, you think about that song, it's like Paul McCartney, musical icon. Michael Jackson, musical genius. 1983, McCartney and Jackson present audible flatulence at a eulogy. It was horrific. If their song Say, Say, Say is art, then Tub Girl is Sistine Chapel. That's what I'm saying. And if you don't know Tub Girl, don't look it up. <coughs> it's horrible. But yeah, we're desensitized. But it's better than reading. Yeah, right? Watching clips like that, reading. Somebody has to stand. Reading is for morons. Yep, I said it. Somebody has to represent the illiterate because they can't piece sentences together. All right? Reading is for morons. Let me explain. For 2.5 million years, <clears throat> we have been hardwired and adapted to relate to each other uh, neurologically, like building neural networks through human interaction, through like auditorily, facial expressions, body language. That's how we've developed profound neural networks to relate to each other uh, for 2.5 million years and for 80 to roughly 180 years, depending on how white and shitty your family was, <laughs> we've been reading. So yeah, 2.5 million years, 80 years. It's just like, yeah, so go ahead, read a book. Suddenly it's profound. Get that one synapse firing and it's profound, right? Yeah, I'm smart, I'm well-read. I'm so smart and well-read that I opened up a bookstore and then what? Bankruptcy. I guess you didn't read chapter 11, did you? You should have shelled out 10 bucks to see Titanic and watch the business model. Your ship sinks. The old man in the sea didn't teach you shit. Seriously, you know what's boring? Fishing. What's more boring than fishing? Putting fishing in print. Yeah. Could you make it worse? Yeah, 180 pages about catching one fish, then give it a Pulitzer. I exercise more neurons figuring out whether the pressure near my asshole is solid or gas. I'm on the bus. Either I ruin everybody else's day or my own day. Everybody's reading the paper, but I'm the real thinker here. I don't know. You know what's better than reading it, though, is igniting it and watching it burn. It's really entertaining. You want to teach kids, burn down the reference section. They will never forget that. You can't even take those books out. You know what's worse than books? Immobile books, crippled books. Crippled books suck. The only reason I'm going into the reference section is to pick up the biggest fattest encyclopedia I can find and just chuck it at a reader. Hope I hit him in the fucking eye with the corner. That's why. Why? He's a reader. He doesn't fight back. He just slinks away regurgitating something somebody else thought. Oh, I, I turned the other cheek. Well then fucking get back here. Hit you and your other cheek until your face swells shut and you have to read books on tape. It's like, then what? You hit them with an overhand right, not the uppercut. They can see it coming. The overhand right. 
because the readers are always looking down because they have no self-esteem. <laughs> Fuck reading. It's propaganda, it's just bullshit propaganda. It's like you gotta read and you gotta go to college. Really, I gotta go to college? You want me to spend that much money on my unemployment? You asshole. I wish I could return my degree for a refund. Just walk into the dean's office and don't work good. I mean, it, it don't work no good, whatever. But you go because people say knowledge is power, knowledge is priceless. Really, I thought it was $10,000 a semester. How much is the ignorance? Oh yeah, I'll take that, I'll take that. Ooh, and it comes with bliss. Co colleges are advertising now because they're corporations. I support that. I support a lot of evil things like unconsensual colonics and eugenics. Mostly, yeah, mostly because the people who need to be sterilized are full of shit. I'm just saying if, uh, if you're gonna advertise for college, at least put a disclaimer at the end of the advertisement like the side effects on a prescription drug commercial, you know? Like the downside to college. Just be like, you know, whatever. Like, hey, come to ITT Tech. Just be forewarned, individuals graduating early are not necessarily exempt from insurmountable debt. If you are considering an Ivy League alternative, please be a legacy or the whitest black kid we've ever seen. <laughs> Sex in the stacks of the school library is strictly prohibited, but in the case of inevitable penetration, please do it on James Joyce. <laughs> Fornication with faculty is more common than initially perceived, but does not guarantee an automatic A. 28% of participants in a double-blind study experience adverse reactions to roommates' masturbatory habits when said roommate forgot to leave a tube sock on the door handle signifying alone time. <laughs> Students with high aspirations in the soft or social sciences are at an increased risk for debilitating debt accompanied by long-term unemployment due to a deficiency in marketable skills. <laughs> Lastly, the freshman 15 was found to be accurate. In these cases, doing your own laundry for the first time was not attributed to shrinking your clothes. You're actually getting fatter. And actually, lastly, a word of restraint, wearing a sideways baseball cap to hide your dumb head will not increase your chances to quote-unquote bone a bitch in the bathroom. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> Plus, the name of the college that you go to is everything. The name is everything. You can literally, you can literally put on your resume, I raped a midget at Harvard. They'd be like, Oh, I see you went to Harvard, yeah. Yeah, for a short time. I don't know. Barack Obama, I only have uh, two criticisms for Barack right now. Is uh, One is he wasn't black enough, and two is he didn't try hard enough. <laughs> like, like a, uh, like a real, real black president would have done something about Rwanda instead of spending our whole budget in the Middle East, you know? Rwanda's an issue, but, you know, you watch the BBC and it's still the same thing. Like, it, Rwandan rebels amputated the hands of 19 orphan refugees. Well, that sucks. Mail their hands to my next show. Maybe I'll get a decent applause break. <laughs> I said decent applause break, not lots of moans, people. No, 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 I asked for it. Um, and he didn't try hard enough. Like, the presidents who make the biggest impact aged like 30 years per term. Like, think about it. FDR got us out of the Depression. By the end of it, he couldn't walk. <laughs> Lincoln preserved the Union. By the end of it, he couldn't walk. <laughs> William Henry Harrison took office, died 31 days later. Did nothing, but look at the effort. <laughs> that is unbelievable effort. JFK didn't try hard enough. He didn't try hard enough. You could see because he was the first TV president. He didn't age. It was like, JFK, look good, look good, look good, look good, look gross. Look real <laughs> gross. <laughs> All I'm saying is if you're gonna be on the parade route, wear a hat. It's like, 
No, I'm too important to cover my gaping rifle wound while I'm still parading by. I'll just traumatize Texas worse than Debbie does Dallas. Fucking George W. Bush aged a lot. I don't know why, but... Um, <laughs> look at the pictures. The, yeah. Thank you. Now, George Bush tried really, really hard, and we're all really, really proud of him. Um, <laughs> for somebody that spent two terms looking and acting like they're missing a chromosome, <laughs> you'd assume he would support stem cell research, but no. It's like... George W. Bush went to Yale and Harvard and totally overlooked Betty and Ford. <laughs> I was hoping he was gonna make history as the first president to OD. Right, right in the office, just fucking OD. Laura comes, sees him face down in his alphabets. Uh, <laughs> he died in the only thing he reads. <laughs> That's uh, kind of, kind of morbid. Let's lighten the mood. 9-11. 9-11, let's get to it, yeah. We all saw the clip of George Bush sitting in front of the, the room for like eight minutes too long. There was a new documentary that came out all about 9-11 and George Bush, and he, you know, take, uh, gives his account of the story. And uh, he sat up there, he said, to project an image of calm. Well, let me tell you something you Dumb fuck. You don't need to project calm to the uninformed. Nobody in the classroom heard it besides you. Why are you acting calm? You politely excuse yourself. You get up, you say, I have diarrhea. I have to go. They're kids. That's a great exit. Everybody's laughing. And you go to a military base and talk to some adults, you sick Fuck. It's like, dude, and you, yeah, to project calm. You know what he did after that? He got up out of that classroom, stumbled into another classroom with kids in it and said, planes are flying into buildings. The United States is under attack to project calm. Which is, I, I was just hoping there was gonna be one subordinate little eight-year-old who was just like, oh yeah, um, the United States is under attack and you're the president of the United States? You're, you're kind of a target. Could you get the fuck out of here? Could you, could you go now? Or could I go and you stay? Which way are you going? I'm not going that way. I have a five year plan. It's called turn 10. <laughs> Fucking psychopath. Then they, whisked his empty head to some military base and in the interview he said the driver is driving too fast so he leaned forward and he was like slow down son Al Qaeda's not here and then he said that was a joke um I personally take offense to that because I'm uh, it's not a joke and uh and I take jokes seriously but uh more importantly, September the 11th, that morning, nobody's heard of Al-Qaeda, including you, George, unless, of course, you heard about it ahead of time, so nobody knows about it. So, and yet he comes out and he's like, nobody could have anticipated this happening, and yet you knew that morning before the Secretary of Defense spoke to you. It's like if I was struck in the back of the head with a hammer, didn't see the guy, and I'm bleeding from the cranium in front of my four-year-old son for comedic effect and I and I get up and I'm like where's Bill he hit me on the back of the head with the red hammer that he got from his father's tool shed on 1128 Ackerman Avenue it's a great house with the white shutters and the white picket fence where he lives with his two brothers and his sister he's had it out for me since not I could have never seen this coming <laughs> It's just stupid, and uh, you gotta understand sequence of events, George. If you're gonna play president, you gotta know when it's okay to know things. Sequence of events. You don't buy the rims before you sell the rocks. You, you cook the coke up, 
You distribute it, you re-up, cook it up, distribute it, re-up, cook it up, distribute it. You, then you buy the room. You don't blow the stash up your nose at Harvard hoping that your father's friends are going to back you in the oil business. <laughs> you know, and your father's friends, by the way, oh yeah, they're Bin Laden's. That's mainstream news, by the way, if you follow. I don't. Because mainstream news is basically they write the news, they uh, perpetuate the news, they report the news, they fuck each other to Huey Lewis and the news, and, and then give birth to a Peabody and expect me to make small talk about the fucking state of the economy when the Federal Reserve is privately owned. Fucking ridiculous. Not that I'm going to go on a rant about it. But let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. It's not outrageous if you're friends with the Bin Lans, but it, it, if you take any fake patriot piece of shit with a TV show, any Bill, Bill O'Reilly, even Bill Maher or Bill Clinton, well, they, they take that to mean let us never tolerate rational questions about 9-11. So I'm like, well, where's the conspicuous absence of the footage of the plane hitting the Pentagon? They're like, you want American ass wipe? Oh, thanks for clearing that up. That was real logical. <laughs> that makes sense now. Makes perfect sense, thank you. If you have nothing to say, tell me at the beginning. If you have nothing to say, talk to me in a southern accent. I could dismiss you immediately. <laughs> Seriously, you would never rent a documentary, you would never rent a documentary about Islamic fundamentalism and have the narrator pop on in a southern accent like, Howdy, y'all, I'm here to talk to you about the Islams. Off, 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 off. Holy shit. I almost got information from that guy. That would have been horrific. It's just like, look at, look at what happened. The buildings fell in the beginning of September. The fires were burning through December, through December, the fires were burning. It's basic physics. If something in New York City is flaming for more than six weeks, it's on Broadway, all right? Those buildings weren't part of the Actors Guild. They didn't take dance in high school. They didn't disappoint their father. Oh, Dan, oh, Dan, you can't joke about 9-11. Oh, but Jeff Dunham can have a terrorist suicide bombing puppet in his act that threatens to kill the audience every five seconds, and that's family entertainment. Jesus Christ, Jeff, why don't you just fucking joke about unconsensual incest? Some people consider that family entertainment too, you asshole. Mostly the stepfathers. It's a crock of shit. But I couldn't be an Al-Qaeda because I couldn't be a suicide bomber, is what I'm saying. I could be a homicide bomber. You know, like put a bomb on a bus and then leave the bus. But I think, I think it would be fun to be a terrorist just to take people hostage and come up with like a ridiculous list of ransom demands that nobody could ever meet. Just like take all, we're all hostage here and I'm just like, comply with my demands and nobody gets hurt. I want an autograph mug shot of Gary Busey, a Betamax cassette of House Party 2, six Twinkies, a neutered toad. I want Pluto to be the ninth planet again. Again, I want a parrot that says the word titties, John Stamos's nail clippings, a fucking Polaroid of Louis Armstrong's asshole, if that exists. I, I need a haircut, clearly, a severed clown's nose. You don't even need a sever a clown's nose. They come right up. I want a, I want a fucking severed clown's nose. Hungry, hungry hippos, a vanity license plate saying the word twat. I want a performance of Too Legit to Quit done by John Mellencamp. And a list of people in New England without any belly buttons. You have 12 minutes to comply with my demands. Automated marketing, I'll get to this. Automated marketing is evil, actually. 
automated marketing is they're designing software solely to separate you from your money. And I swear to God, Google this. It's uh, 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 just Google uh, find 9-11 hijackers. The first two things that come up are 9-11 hijackers, cheap, affordable rates on 9-11 hijackers, free two-day shipping. You can't ship hijackers. They're not supposed to be on the planes. That's why we're all getting naked at the gates. Plus, uh, in two days uh, for no money, that's way better than a decade and billions of dollars. We should have bargain hunted with Amazon before invading. I would have more respect for Amazon if the decision to sell me hijackers wasn't automated. It was just some fucking asshole in a room pricing shit. Just like Nike high tops, uh, $119.99. Children's hula hoops, uh, $7.99. 9-11 hijackers, what? I don't know, $19.99. <laughs> Clearly it's an algorithm to sell you whatever you type in. It, it doesn't even have to make sense. Type in get more for less. It'll be like get more, get more for less, for less. <laughs> Fucking stupid. I was, I was aroused by my first cousin. Get half off. I did. That's the problem. My mom's a whore. Get your mom for cheaper. I, I don't know if I want Amazon talking about my mother, but more importantly, I don't want Amazon undercutting her prices. If, if she's a fucking whore, she sets the prices. They'll sell you anything. It doesn't have to make sense. Just like things I can't finance at affordable rates, inching my way towards debt-related suicide at an all-time low. I know I was at an all-time low. That's why I was suicidal. <laughs> uh, financing available. Not now. Not now, but in two days. Stop selling me stuff at affordable rates. Oh, God. Kill me now. Buy a gun. Oh, fucking A. <laughs> That's how you know the company cares about you. If they would assist in your suicide, or if they would prevent your suicide. If they're like, sir, get back from the ledge. Please step. We don't have your credit info. Please step. Oh, God. We lost the customer, the humanity. It's all about profit margins. They don't give a shit about us. But am I watching somebody eating foie gras right in the middle? This is the weirdest fucking set ever. Is, it, is there dim sum coming around or something? Just hors d'oeuvres right in the middle of the show. We have a waitress. This is a Whole Foods. Uh, you guys heard of Whole Foods? <laughs> I don't, we don't have them in Syracuse, so... Whole Foods, now in a marketing gimmick, sells steak with a backstory to it. Like a backstory, like your fucking ribeye is auditioning for a roll at your barbecue. It's fucking <laughs> sick. But you can buy a steak with a story. It's like, oh, this cow was raised in the rolling pastures of Nebraska and was cage-free and grass-fed. And yeah, I'm not eating that steak. That cow was way too happy. I want a miserable little Anne Frank steak. Fucking. I want some fucking. I want a steak that prayed for death from birth. That way it's happy when it's in my happy meal. I, you know what I'm saying? I want my cows. I want my fucking cow's backstory to be like, yeah. We named that cow Elsie. The only reason we named it is to traumatize the fucking neighborhood kids when we slaughtered it. Yeah. And we did it, we did it by, we did it by inviting a fourth grade class over to beat it to death with crowbars, which took 11 hours because they have no upper body strength. We woke up the cow fucking three hours early every morning by branding it between the eye with 900 degree and irons in the shape of a fucking penis. And yeah, and Elsie had eight cage-free siblings that would frolic around and they would look at burnt penis face and make fun of her. 
And every day that cow prayed for death and you, sir, got a USDA choice cut and made that cow's day. That... That's the fucking cow I'm eating. By the way, do you know how tender an 11-hour Anne Frank crowbar steak would be? Really fucking tender. You're like, oh my God, it's like butter. I can't believe it's not butter. I guess what I'm trying to say is crack cocaine. Where's the problem? I bought a hundred dollars worth of crack, smoked it all very quickly, felt amazing by the way, and got an A on my calculus homework. <laughs> nobody ever says that story. Nobody ever, nobody hears this story about the guy who pieced his shitty life back together after buying an ounce of rock cocaine. You know, he just bought an ounce and like, you know, paid his child support, paid his mortgage, smoked a couple grams, went Christmas shopping, reunited with his estranged father. No, it's demonized. So I'm saying is, if you fucking, if you haven't tried crack, try it. It's like smokable Adderall. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose besides your wife, your house, your kids, your dignity, your teeth, your self-respect, your heterosexuality? I sucked a dick for crack. Why is it always a dick for crack? Nobody's ever like, I licked a nipple for a, a dime sack. We, we rolled a blunt, we had a good time. There was a documentary on uh, this prostitute in Chicago about crack, and she was doing all sorts of drugs, but um, the documentary was uh, about this prostitute, she, she was so fucking hot, like by any standards. Like, I like weird quirky chicks that everybody's like, ew, what the fuck do you like? I like that she's fucking weird, I don't know why. <laughs> But no, she was just wandering the street and she was like, hey, most of the veins in my arms had done collapsed, so I inject this speedball directly into my face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're fucking up the merchandise. Not everybody <laughs> wants to fuck you from behind, all right? Not to mention, if you pick up a prostitute, with track marks down her face, there's room for negotiation. <laughs> it's like, ah, 20 bucks, I'll suck your dick. How, how about I give you 10 bucks and you recite Phantom of the Opera with no mask on? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking freak. And I don't smoke a cigarette after sex. I smoke roughly 20 cartons. That's a, about the amount of time before somebody's desperate enough to sleep with me again. Um, fuck it, I'll smoke a cigarette before sex, whatever. Either way, I'm paying for both. Who, who fucking cares? I'll smoke a cigar, I don't give a shit. Why are you smoking that? In case it's a boy. So I can, obviously, it's a joke. A prostitute is not having my baby. I don't really want a miniature version of myself crossed with somebody dumb enough to sleep with me. I don't want them around. Plus, kids are like farts. You don't mind your own. Everybody else's suck. I mean, also, ultimately, it's up to her decision unless she's like, I want to keep it, and then I got to take matters into my own hands, obviously. So what do you do? Fucking baseball bat to the gut. Hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. That is, that is plan C. Plan B is plan A. If you know plan B, the pregnancy is plan A. And plan A is my abortion speech, which is uh, we're not ready for this financially. We don't have a relationship. I'll just call you to have sex. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, a good ground environment for... Uh, I could be a pedophile. That, you don't want me touching the kids. I don't know. I don't have kids. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get her to get rid of it. And if not, then you fucking wind up and you can't really fucking hit a home run with 20 cells. It's got to be like a third trimester up at bat to fucking collapse it like a fetus chest. It's got to be like a... And if you're offended by that, I thoroughly hope you're a pro-lifer because... 
Let me explain to you the difference. Either you go to the doctor and they take a vacuum to your twat and it, a bloody mess that's fucking hideous, it's not even beautiful to you and you're the mom, falls onto the floor and the fetus dies, or you wind up with a Louisville slugger and the fucking bloody mass falls on the floor, and guess what? The fetus dies. Either way, it's dead. It, you could fucking, what's, what's the difference? What's the difference? $650. You could put, you could put the entirety of the $650 directly back into a pro-life organization. And it, it, if she gets pregnant again, you still have the bat from the first abortion. <laughs> Fucked up. I'm horrible in bed. I, like, sex with me is as sterile and uncomfortable as dialysis. It's just fucking horrible. But my, like, fuckability on stage goes up a decent amount. Off stage, they're like, why would you say that? I thought that was a joke. And I'm like, no, really, like, if you think about necrophilia, you could just stick a, an ice cube in your asshole and then I fuck you and it feels the same if after you take a cold bath and I'm serious the whole time. And she's like, oh my God, I thought that was an act. That's real. But um, no, it's just like I'm horrible in bed and God's honest truth, I'm so bad that I have actually, I have actually ordered a sandwich while finishing too soon. Just like... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Peanut butter and jelly with the crust cut off. She made it. I win. Right? And plus, I believe in safe sex. I believe in safe sex for other people. I personally like to risk my own mortality when I plunge balls deep into some promiscuous venereal garbage disposal after a two liter of Barton's vodka. It's like fucking genital bungee jumping. It's not fun unless we're gonna die the whole time. We're dying. <laughs> I mean, sex for me sucks. It's not a good thing. I'm pretty much offensive to all five senses. You kiss me, I taste like cigarettes. I use tons of main deodorant, so you smell me, I smell like I haven't showered since the last time I went to a Grateful Dead show back in 92. You see me, I have a fucking urban Ronald McDonald clown head look. It's not like, are we gonna fuck or are you gonna make me a balloon hat? We can do both, I don't know, we <laughs> fucking do both. And then you hear me, my voice is nasal, it's not that good, but I'm just trying to turn you on, girls like money. I'm just like, oh yeah, my credit score is 780. Is that doing it for you? No? I summer in Nantucket. No? I use summer as a verb. What, a, what, what do you want me to say? You know, and then you feel me. That's the last element. You feel me, and my accoutrements may not be that good. It could be the fucking width of a wrist and the length of a chapstick. Just fucking get in there. Ow, 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 Dan, it hurts, and I don't feel anything. How is that possible? It hurts, and I don't feel anything. That is physically impossible. Yeah, that's what it's like when I'm in. Dan, I know we've only been doing this for about 30 seconds. Could we stop a ham and cheese on a croissant? <laughs> I finished. The most important orgasm happened. My orgasm. I mean, biologically speaking, who cares if you have a decent orgasm? I mean, the survival of our species is contingent upon me enjoying sex. You know, if it was up to God, you could be reading our eviction notice during the whole fucking act, because that's how we propagate the species, but I'm not discounting it. I mean, the female orga at orgasm is like my space. It exists, it's just not as good. I like that. That's getting edited out, by the way, because I don't need that fucking hat. <laughs> Yeah, all right, look, all I'm saying is it, there's a place for your vices. There is a place for your vices. If you're into prostitutes, move to Nevada. If you're into pills, go to South Florida and doctor shop. 
If you want to be bored, move to Delaware. If you want to fucking be white, live in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you want to be destitute, move to Detroit. If you want to be homicidal, stay in Detroit. Uh, you want to be in porn, move to California. Not dirty enough for you, move to Japan. You know, if you're into, if you're fucking into fecal bukkake, I want you off the continent immediately. But we're all, uh, this is a good event. You get to meet each other, mingle. I like mingling, p picking up people. But guys and girls have complaints. They all do. Everybody's got a complaint. Guys complain like, oh man, she's giving me mixed signals, man. She's giving me mixed si I never get mixed signals. It's always a clear and evident no, Dan, no. No way. No. Why? Dan, because you try too hard. What? <laughs> I try too hard? You're wearing six inch stilettos, more fucking makeup than the average clown and less clothing than Michael Phelps, and I try too hard. Look at my head, did it look like I tried really hard? Plus, like, not trying hard is gonna get you laid. Like, hey, it's Friday, let's go pick up chicks. No, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try at home, I'm just gonna Stay home, not bathe, smoke pot, and watch Operation Dumbo Drop. With the fucking volume down and rock lobster on repeat. I'm trying to get laid. No, it's not it. And then girls have complaints too. They'd be like, uh, Dan, you sell drugs. That's a complaint. You sell drugs. How is that a complaint? Me selling drugs is like you having bulimia. It works, all right? I'm just saying. It works. Stay rich, stay skinny. Pretty simple. Girls complain, oh, Dave, he's a womanizer. Well, you dress like that to get attention. He's giving you attention. But you inexplicably prefer the company of gay guys, the type of guy that would look at your genitals, vomit into his mouth, swallow it out of courtesy to you when you're ignoring a perfectly good womanizer at the far end of the bar who would adore your genital. That's all I'm saying. So don't downplay womanizers. They, they will get you off. And the last thing I'm going to say is um, sometimes women complain, uh, people just use me for sex. Well, maybe that's all you have to offer. You ever? No, seriously. You ever think of that? You have a personality that leaves a lot to be desired, but you, you got a nice rack. Play the hand you're dealt. All right. You don't hear me complaining about how my modeling career never took off. No. I happen to be a very sexy man. Yeah, and you're interesting to talk to. No, I'm not crying into my cosmopolitan about my less appealing traits. Like, oh, women just use me for my intellectual stimulation and my stories that have a point. They always overlook my receding head of pubic hair and my inexplicable double chin even though I'm 102 pounds. No, I play the fucking... I play the hand I'm dealt. That's why I'm standing up here like a raging narcissist with a microphone when you can literally hear me like this. <laughs> ben Yimkin, thank you. You guys were great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan McCoy. He's ridiculously fucking hilarious. The only comedian I've ever seen in my life, I have described him as kiss your fucking pants hilarious. He's, he's this guy who he speaks faster than you can actually think, and for some reason, at the very end of his joke, you know exactly what he's talking about, and you're dying laughing.